Honest J. Nowak. Coming at you live. All right. A pleasure to meet y'all at last, and welcome back to HJN. And today, Chris Sabat is basically next in line. Sabat, Sabat, it doesn't really seem to matter very much, but you know what? For number 944, that's basically who is up next instead of what is up next. Because, as you probably already know by this point, several days ago, I've talked about actor Sean Chamel, whom, of course, is most recognized as the voice of Goku and King Kai from Dragon Ball Z. Well, it's about time that I pretty much talk a bit about another actor from that franchise, and that, of course, would be Chris Sabat. But in this particular case, it's going to be really important for me to highlight exactly what my honest standpoint is on these kinds of subjects, because a lot of people might not necessarily be willing to ask me what on earth does this have to do with me being honest and all that, but that's only because the series in itself, its longevity, and a bunch of other factors have not necessarily given plenty of people the time that it would take to write down a comment as simple as, what does this have to do with you being honest? So, I mean, there's a lot of other things out there to be worried about than just worrying about me and my honesty, pretty much. Well, you know what though? At least I still keep true to my word and my commitments are still intact. So, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that out and just let it soak in for a little while, at least. But until all that happens, pretty much, let's just talk a bit about Chris Sabat. And so here's the thing about it. Chris Sabat was born in 1973, currently 48 going on 49, and has been the voice of actually a lot more characters in the Dragon Ball Z canon compared to Sean Chamel. Because most famously, you'd remember Sabat for being the voice of Vegeta, the rival to Goku, and also the prince of the Saiyan race, as well as Piccolo, the lone Namekian, whom of course lived on Earth, pretty much. But aside from those two being very big main characters within the storyline that's developed so far, Sabat has also provided some voiceovers for various other characters, including Rakum and Berger of the Ginyu Force, pretty much. But then, of course, there comes some other strange old cameo appearances that would pretty much be almost out of the question because... To be fair, it is certainly a fair stake, but I really do feel like there's always a point where the voiceovers are pretty much getting way too big, way too hard, but I feel like if there's one other voice that I feel like Sabat should definitely be notable for, it would probably be the dragon of the Dragon Balls. On Earth, the dragon's name is Shenron, on Namek is Purunga. So. The thing is though, my honest standpoint on this particular actor is that when you really take a look at how far back Sabat's original performances has gone through, the kind of distinct grisly voice that Vegeta has, and not to mention the low, calm, and ever so fierce voice of Piccolo, and not to mention the various other sorts of things that have attributed to the other characters that I mentioned, plus others along the line in case you know a lot better about this actor than I do, then be sure to hit me up in the comment section below. But still, Sabat is an incredible actor by any means, and certainly does have a bit more noteworthy performances in comparison to Sean Chamel. But then when you take a look at the many other actors out there that have been known throughout the whole storyline, and throughout the whole franchise, especially in the American version of Dragon Ball Z, it sure has been quite a ride. But for the past 20 years that I've known about the franchise, and throughout the past 20 years that I've gotten to know about the, the actors and the characters they performed as, it's been a huge, huge, huge journey. Because when you compare Dragon Ball Z Budokai from 2002 and the performances that Sabat and Shamel, plus the many other actors that have gone through, 
they did not necessarily do too well. But at least for the time that had taken place, it was the very early 2000s. This was the same year that Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, Disney's Treasure Planet, Blue Sky Studios' Ice Age, John Q, and various other movies were released. Yeah. So, Dragon Ball Z Budokai pretty much came around at a bit of a busy point in time. But then let's not forget Dragon Ball Z Online from 2010, which I've also gotten to play every now and then. And then, of course, the most recent, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot from 2019 and 2020. So, I'd say there, though, is probably when Sabat and Shamel were at their peak in terms of their performance. The kind of emotional outlet that they seem to provide us all the time in that game compared to the others and compared to the rest of the Dragon Ball Z franchise certainly has quite an amazing feel to it because since Shamel and Sabat have pretty much been these characters for a long time I feel like Kakarot has given us the huge, huge outlier that we were supposed to get a long time ago. Their voice acting has pretty much had a huge run, but it's now at the highest that we've ever seen in forever, pretty much. And I'm more than happy to call Kakarot one of the best PS4 games that I've ever played because of this one reason. And so... I feel like that this was pretty well said, but because it's been over six, seven minutes perhaps, I feel like now would be a good time to pretty much just end it here. But yet I will have more episodes of HGN coming soon, so if you want to see more, go down to my channel, then make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.